30 June 2005, Marcus Luttrell is alone, wounded, and surrounded by Taliban fighters in the mountains of Afghanistan. Just as he is isolated, dehydrated, and possibly nearing the end, a man approaches him. War in Afghanistan has blurred the lines of friend and foe like never before. The rules of engagement are a fine line between getting killed or being arrested for war crimes. But as Luttrell pulls out his grenade, something is different about this man. He doesn't look angry or on the verge of anything. He looks confused. His next move would change Marcus's life. He held out his hand. Navy SEALs fear nothing, except for one thing, being left behind in death. It's part of the mindset and beliefs of every SEAL that no matter what happens on the battlefield, your brothers will climb the gates of hell to retrieve your body. They owe it to each other that no matter what, a SEAL gets to come home. On this day, Marcus will no longer be alone. God has sent another son of his to help him. Hello and welcome to Lights, Camera, History. This is our historical review of the inspiring movie Lone Survivor. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button or comment down below. The War on Terror has had some interesting movies to say the least. They have been highly politicized and from a movie standpoint, they have generally made the public uncomfortable. The war has not been popular at home, but the men and women over there have had nearly an impossible task of fighting an enemy that they can't tell who's a combatant or a civilian. Lone Survivor was released in 2013 to those same uncomfortable sentiments. Based on the book One Survivor, the eyewitness account of Operation Red Wing and the lost heroes of SEAL Team 10, Luttrell wrote the book with a ghost writer while he was still on active duty, which is really rare. The book tells the account of the real-life 2005 mission, Operation Red Wings, which was a capture or kill mission of a high-value Taliban target that was reported to have killed Marines earlier in the year. The four SEALs depicted are Hospital Corpsman First Class Marcus Luttrell, Lieutenant Michael P. Murph Murphy, Gunner's Mate Second Class Danny Dietz, Sonar Technician Second Class Matthew Axe Axelson, Luttrell is even featured in the movie with a small speaking part. Lone Survivors, directed by Peter Berg and stars Mark Wahlberg as Marcus Luttrell, Taylor Kitsch as Lieutenant Michael Murphy, Emile Hirsch as Danny Dietz, Ben Foster as Matthew Axe Axelson, Eric Bana as Lieutenant Commander Eric S. Christensen. The movie begins with the SEAL's everyday life in Afghanistan. Marcus Luttrell, a Navy SEAL, and his team set out on a mission to capture or kill notorious Taliban leader Ahmad Shah in late June 2005. After running into mountain herders and capturing them, they were left with no choice but to follow their rules of engagement or be imprisoned. Ahmad Shah, a local Taliban warlord in the Korangal Valley, is identified as the person responsible for the deaths of several Marines, plus any villagers who are believed to have aided the American forces in Afghanistan. Inserted overnight via helicopter, the four-man team make their way toward Shah's last known location. Due to the mountainous terrain the team are operating in, communications become difficult. Though the team identifies Shah, they are discovered by local villagers, one of whom is carrying a walkie-talkie. Believing that the villagers are Taliban sympathizers, the SEALs debate setting them free or killing them. The ranking officer, Lieutenant Murphy, orders them to be set free and the group is left to fight for their lives in one of the most valiant efforts of modern warfare. Marcus Luttrell, the title character, would be the only survivor and his rescue team was shot down by the Taliban before landing. While trying to hide and get water, Luttrell is discovered by local villager Mohammed Gulab. By ancient beliefs, he was obligated to help this man in the eyes of God, and come hell or high water, that's what he did. Although the Taliban was able to get to Luttrell while he was in the village, Gulab was able to keep him alive long enough for the army to come rescue him. Although the movie closely follows the book, there are a few problems with Luttrell's story that have created a lot of controversy, either in the military community, with family members, or people all over the world interested in this story. We really went into the weeds to unpack this. 
The first is the vote the SEALs take on what to do with the herders. The military's been quite clear on the fact that they don't believe a vote ever took place. Lieutenant Murphy's family disputes that this took place, and the military states that it would be against everything they drill into them as SEALs. It's possible they discussed it freely, but it's hard to say. There are two disputed facts in Luttrell's book that the after-action report contradicts. The first is the amount of men Shaw had in the mountains. According to Luttrell's account, there were some 80 to 200 Taliban fighters on that mountain. The investigation done by the Navy suggests there were at least eight, no more than 20 on the high end. Some reports from the recovery team said there weren't any dead Taliban fighters on the mountain. There is a simple explanation for the numbers discrepancy. First, the videos that the Taliban shot depicted in the movie are available online if you dig deep enough. Although they are sad and horrifying to watch, they do show a decent amount of Taliban fighters, closer to 20. If you read the book, Luttrell inadvertently answers this. Upon the goat herders leaving the seals behind, Marcus described how quickly they moved down the mountain. That area of Afghanistan is very difficult to navigate, and Saw's men were known as the Mountain Lions. They knew the hills. They knew how to move. They knew how to fight. This is likely why the SEAL thinks there were more. He was fighting a crafty adversary. I wonder if any of us could have accurately counted with 10 to 20 AK-47s raining down on us. And what about there being no dead bodies? Although I'm depending on a translated copy of the video from an online source, one of the Taliban fighters can be heard saying, he killed one of ours. So the Taliban, for propaganda purposes, might have removed the bodies long before the Rangers came, which they had a few days to accomplish. The next issue people take with the story is involved with witnesses such as Gulab contradicting things Marcus reported. Namely, many believe that Marcus never even fired a shot and he ran. Gulab said he was found with all 11 of his magazines. This is likely a mistranslation because he didn't say whether there were still bullets in his magazines. There is some drama in the last five years with Gulab trying to receive help from Luttrell. After the attack, the United States military built roads and provided supplies to him as a thank you. The improved village only raised his status among his villagers, but even still, he was a marked man. The Taliban even killed a family member in the years following. While he was in the United States to help promote the movie, he was offered help by military and immigration people to seek asylum, but he declined. His lawyer commented that he could have easily been rubber stamped to a green card and eventually permanent residence, but he had family still in Afghanistan. His case is ongoing, and at the time of this video, he is still alive, and we were unable to even say which country he's living in, which we're okay with. He deserves to be in peace. And Luttrell had helped him with money in the past. The times he's been here, Gulab found America to be a tough place to live, even for a short while. Marcus set up a GoFundMe page for him, raising over $30,000. Although Marcus has admitted he could never truly pay the man back for saving him, they have had a falling out. I did some research in this, and it appears communication is at the root of a lot of their problems. Luttrell never went into cardiac arrest. This is also fictional. And that story earlier about the man finding him in a stream and holding his hand? It's somewhat fictional. Luttrell requested asylum in real life. Marcus just had to say, Nanawatai and the man was bound by Pashtun tradition to help him. These are two things that were not in the book that the filmmakers did take considerable liberties on. The first is that the fight in time and village took place over several days, and the SEALs didn't witness the Hilo crash. Those were pure movie inventions. Luttrell didn't walk to the stream. He crawled almost four miles and limped for the other three, and the Taliban never got into a gunfight with the villagers. This is false. To close, the only people that know what happened beside Marcus are no longer with us. Those SEALs never had a chance. They actually didn't just run into the goat herders, it was a setup. The local Taliban militia knew they were there. The helicopter that dropped them off was so loud, they knew that they were there before they even set foot on the mountain. The mission was poorly planned. And the Taliban leader that they were after, they had poor intelligence on him to begin with. Although the movie states he'd killed 20 Marines. At this point in the war, there wasn't 20 dead Marines in all Afghanistan. So for the final grade on this movie, we give it a C-. There's a lot of controversy about Latrill's depiction of events. We do know a few things for sure. Three highly trained Navy SEALs gave their life to defend this country from terrorists. To this day, he's had the support from his fellow Navy SEALs which is enough for us.
We listen to a lot of Marcus Luttrell's interviews and speeches about his harrowing journey. He is, without a doubt, an American hero that lost three brothers that day. The rest is the fog of war. Marcus Luttrell is on record as saying the worst day of his life, the one that cut deep, the one that he will never forget, was the day he was told he could no longer be a Navy SEAL. Thanks for watching.